All right, I am, this is Mr. Tala. I am here today to explain the new chemistry grading system. Uh, we, I listened to parents on back to school night. I uh, have talked to admin and I've tried to come up with a compromise that keeps the spirit of this uh, program alive, while at the same time addressing some community concerns and addressing some of my own concerns that, uh, that have arisen and, I, and I've known of for a while and so I've so I'm trying to uh, address some of those and come to a compromise in those so let's go ahead uh, let's start with some of the values and non-values of this class uh, some of the values that I hold in this class are uh, the acquisition of knowledge of course um, the development of skills um, also a big thing with me is I want kids to have a willingness to try again after failure I also want there to be some sort of motivating tool to get them to try again after they may fail. Um, and then I want, a I want a student to earn the end of semester mark that they get. Um, whatever they get, I want it to be an earned mark, whether it is an A, B, C, D, or F. Um, I want that to be the grade that they have earned. Um, Non-values, I don't want any busy work in my class. Uh, I also don't like kids only getting one try. I think that happens too often, and I want kids to, if they don't show proficiency, I uh, I want them to try again. I don't care when they show me proficiency. I care that they show me proficiency. Um, I also don't want a student to get a grade that they don't deserve, uh, good or bad. Um, and so that's one of the big things that has driven this change and uh, something that I feel like I've addressed in this change as far as the old system compared to the new system. Um, there are going to be three categories in the grading system. Uh, weekly assessments will account for 70% of the grade, labs will account for 20% of the grade, and the cumulative final, and there is a cumulative final now, will be 10% of the grade. Weekly assessments. Um, there will The weekly assessments will still be in place. There will be approximately 68 topics per semester. Uh, many topics will more than one topic will be assessed on every single assessment um, so that we can get through them all. Um, basically, the topics o covered over the course of the week will be assessed on Friday. So if I cover five topics during a particular week, all five of those topics will show up with questions on the assessment on Friday. Um, each topic will be worth 10 points. So if you uh, do not answer the questions correctly or you don't answer or you do not show proficiency in that topic, um, and that means no proficiency at all, That'll be a zero. Uh, if you are, show that you're building to proficiency, if a student shows that they are building to proficiency, that will be two points. So, um, and that can include uh, many different uh, things. Basically, the attempt of the question and some showing of that they were there in class, paying attention, uh, gave it a shot. That shows that they are building to proficiency. Um, then, if a student shows that they are proficient, that's worth ten points. Uh, so they basically got the question right, 10 points for them. And then there will still be, and by the way, proficient level questions, the basic level questions, will be the equivalent of the level 3 questions that we had before. Um, level 4 questions, or advanced proficient questions, will be worth one point of extra credit. So uh, they have the opportunity to show enrichment and to show that they are advanced in a particular topic. And if they do, they'll get one point of extra credit. Um, retakes. I still have retakes in my class. I believe in the retakes. Um, if a student does not demonstrate proficiency on a topic, she may retake the assessment for that topic during tutorial or at the after-school tutoring center. So if a student takes an assessment, um, there are five topics on that assessment, they get uh, 10 points on four of those topics and two points on one of those topics, they can come in during tutorial at the after-school tutoring center and retake just that one topic that they received a two on and they can bring it up to a 10 at any time throughout the semester. Um, if they want to retake the assessment, they must do the suggested homework for that assessment. And so uh, that is still in place. And then um, if a student, so that is their ticket to get in, if they want to uh, get, they want to show proficient, if they want to show proficiency a second time, they have to come in with the homework. If they want to show it a third time, so if a student fails to show proficiency in the second time taking the assessment, and they want to take that assessment again, uh, they again, in the same way as before, have to come in to receive a half hour of instruction from me 
on that topic. This half hour can be during tutorial or at the after school tutoring center. As far as labs go, there are 27 labs planned this year and it, they account for 20% of the final grade. And in the cumulative final, it is a multiple choice final worth 10% of the grade. Um, this year so far, we've had two assessments. They've already been taken, but they can easily, but all of those grades can easily be transferred into the new grading system. Um, everything will be taught and assessed in the same way. It will simply be scored differently. So positives and negatives of the new system. There are there is some good and there is some bad. Uh, there is a give and take in this, and so um, while it is not as pure as it was before, it certainly has many of the good sides of before of the uh, system before, and uh, has accommodated some of the community concerns about the. Uh, the, the earlier system. Um, positives. It continues to allow for a student to demonstrate proficiency even after failing to do so. You can do this at any time and they have to do some sort of work in order to uh, be able to show, be allowed to show proficiency again. The 2 to 10 discrepancy between building to proficiency and showing proficiency still provides adequate motivation for students to retake assessments. So because there is such a large gap between a 2 and a 10, um, that 8 point gap uh, provides a large amount of motivation. Um, 8 points is a big chunk of their grade. It may be, it will be over 1% of their assessment grade. And so um, that large gap gives them quite a bit of motivation. Now, it is not as much motivation as before, because before, if they had a two in anything, that would bring their grade, that would bring their entire mark down. But um, I think that this is a good uh, compromise. Um, there is still no busy work. There is no homework. If a student, a, a student is expected to go to the suggested homework when they feel that they need extra practice. So this puts the, uh, the, responsibility on the student to determine when they are not meeting proficiency, basically when they can't answer the questions in class, and then they go home and they do some extra practice on that topic. Um, it does make the class more equitable in regards to other chemistry classes on campus. Uh, it, I think this is a good thing in that um, your student did not choose to be in my class, and so your child did not choose to be in my class, and so uh, I think that it should be fairly equal across the board. The GPA should be equal. And so I think that this addresses that and it will make it so that the GPAs will be equal. Um, and then it removes the chance for a student who shows proficiency on all topics to get hung up on one topic at the end of the semester. Um, when I really think about if a student has threes and fours across the board and then has a two in one topic, uh, let's say that student got a two in a topic towards the end of the semester. There is the logistical aspect of time that comes into play. Um, the semester does end, and so uh, I don't want there to not be enough hours in the day to have everybody reassess on all the topics that they want to be reassessed on. Um, and so we will do, so this is uh, me doing what I can to make sure that a student who has threes and fours across the board and gets a two on something at the end of the semester doesn't end up uh, getting a C because really I can't say that a student who gets threes and fours across the semester and then gets a two at the end really deserves a C. And so I think that this uh, addresses that. Now at the same time, um, it does make the system an average, <clears throat> and averages are inherently not good. They make it so that a, a student may not be motivated to show proficiency in every topic because other topics are bringing their grade up. And so um, there is going to be some measure of a piecemeal knowledge of chemistry walking out of my class. Um, but you know what? This is it is a compromise, and there's good and bad in this on both sides. And so. Um, that those are the negatives of the system. Um, if you have any questions about this, about the new grading system, um, please don't hesitate to email me at uh, a Adam Atala. That's A D A M A T A L L A H at iusd dot org. Um, you can find that on my Blackboard site, and you can email me anytime. I'll answer any questions you have about this new system, and hopefully I've addressed a lot of your concerns and a lot of your questions already through this video. Thank you very much. Have a good day.